everyone, it's Cheer, bringing you another low man guide. Instead of doing a full step-by-step -step guide this time, I want to just go over loadouts and a few helpful tips I wish I knew when I started working on this duo. I'm going to go over loadouts for all three classes and even talk about hitting damage. Let's get to it! First things first, I want to go over a few helpful tips dealing with the general mechanics of this encounter before I get into anything class specific. Ogres and knights should be killed as soon as they're spawning in, because the faster you are, the more time you'll have to grab the brand, swap your gear, and get set up for damage. A lot of teams split up and take half of the map on their own. But my teammate and I decided that he would take the ogres and I would take the knights. It just worked for us. Another thing that helped speed us up was killing the fourth knight while standing on the plate. We would hop on, call the second plate, and then kill the fourth and final knight. Any extra time we could get was helpful in the long run. When it comes to grabbing pieces of the brand, Speed is still a necessity. While you're waiting for your teammate to call the second plate, you should be standing in the center of the map to give yourself the shortest distance possible between all three plates. When your teammate is torn and grabbing a piece of the brand, you should be on the other side of the map so that you each have half the map covered to get on the next plate as quickly as possible. The next thing I want to mention is something extremely helpful that I hear most people using. This mod right here called Run For Your Life. This mod is raid specific and gives a plus 20 resilience and a plus 20 mobility bonus while you are torn. Depending on what class you're on, it requires 80 to 100 mobility to reach the pieces of the brand claimer. If you're having trouble with stats, this could really help you out. The best part about it is that it stacks. Tips for hitting damage. If you're on Hunter or Warlock, you're most likely on a solar subclass. The 25% damage buff from Font of Might makes a big difference on this encounter, so making a Solar Well will substantially increase your damage. We tried a few different ways of making Solar Wells, but when it came down to it, Wither Horde with Explosive Well Maker was the most reliable and the most consistent. With Wither Horde, it was easy to create a well before damage phase as well as during our damage rotation, utilizing Seeking Wells so we didn't have to miss a beat. Next up was the real damage savior, Lumina. I cannot emphasize this enough, Lumina was the game changer. At first we were just getting the 25% damage buff from Well, but once we replaced it with Lumina's 35%, we had absolutely no issue hitting the damage we needed. Time to go over the Hunter loadout. I started off the encounter running Succession, Trinity Ghoul, and a Bait and Switch Cataclysmic. For this setup, ideally you want to be at 100 mobility and 100 resilience. I managed to reach a piece of the brand claimer once with 90 mobility, but I wouldn't risk it if you're going for consistency. Looking over my mods, I used Arc Siphon to make orbs with Trinity Ghoul. I got Sniper Dex and one stack of Font of Might there. Powerful Friends for that plus 20 mobility bonus. I used Recuperation to heal on orb pickup. And then I had Elemental Time Dilation slotted on my class item. Then I swapped to everything I used for damage, and to make it a little easier to see the mods I was using for damage, I'll just put it up on the screen here. With elemental time dilation and two stacks of Font of Might, my solar weapon boost lasted for a full 16 seconds. Then I had on Explosive Wellmaker paired with Seeking Wells. Seeing as Font of Might gives an extra 25% damage buff, it is definitely a necessity here. As I mentioned earlier, to make that solar well using Explosive Well Maker, I paired it with Wither Horde. One thing you'll notice here is that the chest piece I swapped to is actually my reserves piece. Everyone has their own little quirks when they play, and this is one of mine. If you're wondering why it looks like a life vest, it's because I like to make my reserves piece stand out. That way, I'm able to tell if I still have it on at any time I go into the third person. I'm highlighting it here because I use my reserves piece to help hoard all of my heavy bricks in the center of the map for final stand. 
If you watch my duo clear, you'll notice I'm swapping on and off my reserves piece at random times to collect specific bricks that are on the outskirts of the map. This allowed me to have full heavy ammo for final stand. I wanted to talk about this hunter jump because unlike Warlock or Titan, us hunters can't float. High jump with stompies is what you need to equip. This jump ends with a hard landing, but it doesn't always have to. If you use your forward momentum properly, you can slide down a sloped piece of the map and take zero fall damage. It's not easy to be consistent with, but if you're low health in a pinch, it's worth it to go for. You can see a couple examples of me doing it here. Hunters be warned. If you make yourself radiant and stand inside of a warlock's well or have blessing of the sky, you will not be granted the buff being radiant gives to your super. It does still work when you are not under the effects of another buff. You can see the difference here. I'm not sure what caused this interaction in the first place or if it will ever be corrected, but it's something to keep in mind. Now for the Warlock loadout. My teammate was running Starfire Protocol because he was using fusion nades to assist in killing the ogres. It also gave him an extra grenade so he'd always have one when it was time to pop heat rises. When we look at his gear, Font of Might wasn't showing up when I had my cursor over it, so keep that in mind as I scroll over each of his pieces. We have an Ammo Finder and Font of Might. Sniper decks with Font of Might. On the chest piece, we have Striking Light for extra damage resistance while sprinting. Linear Scavs on the legs. Then Powerful Friends for plus 20 mobility and Run for Your Life for another plus 20 mobility while torn. After killing Ogres and Knights, he swapped her for Baron since it made it way easier to maintain heat rises. Now he's going to swap over and show us what he used for damage. We have a third stack of Font of Might. Luna Factions for faster reload with elemental time dilation and a fourth stack of Font of Might. For weaponry, we have Lumina, which we discussed earlier, a sniper rifle, and a bait-and-switch cataclysmic. Just to clarify, the reason for stacking Font of Might in this manner is because the more stacks you have, the longer your damage buff will last. You can see here that with four stacks of Font of Might and elemental time dilation equipped, that his damage buff was lasting a full 30 seconds. Looking over his subclass, we can see he's on well, with an empowering rift and fusion grenades to go with Starfire Protocol. He also equipped Celestial Fire for some ranged attacks. The aspects he had on are a touch of flame and, of course, heat rises. He wanted me to point out that he did not use Icarus Dash for this encounter. To make the jump on Warlock, I recommend having on at least 80 mobility for consistency. You'll also need to use Heat Rises. As I mentioned earlier, my teammate found that using Forbearance was an easy way to maintain Heat Rises between jumps. Keeping that timer up was extremely important to ensure that he had enough time left to reach the Brand Claimer. Now to go over the Titan loadout. I'm going to go over the Arc Titan build that utilizes Storm Grenades and Dodge. I'm going to show the loadout piece by piece, but I thought it would be easier to see the mods if I displayed them here first. You'll need two sets of armor, one for setup and one for damage phase. To get set up for damage, you're going to need to be at charge with light times five. In order for that to happen, you need to equip charged up, supercharge, and a way of getting charged with light, which for this example is taking charge. Stacks on stacks is also extremely helpful since it grants an extra stack of charge with light for each charge you obtain. When it comes time for damage phase, you want to have 5 stacks of firepower equipped so that you can throw as many grenades as possible. Looking over my gear, we have Charged Up and Run For Your Life, Supercharged, Precision Charge that probably should have been stacks on stacks, Powerful Friends for plus 20 mobility, 
then taking charge with another stack of Run For Your Life. For weapons, I kept on Succession and Trinity Ghoul since I was comfortable with it and knew it was great for making orbs. Then I threw on Storm Chaser with Demolitionist for damage. Swapping over to the armor set I used for damage, you can see that I have firepower on every single piece. Heart of Inmost Light is extremely beneficial since all of your ability cooldowns are greatly decreased. Another thing to note, 100 Resilience and 100 Discipline are necessary for this build. Your damage sequence should look a little like this. Melee adds before the bombs go off. Then throw a grenade, dodge, fire a linear shot. Throw as many grenades as possible while firing a linear shot in between and dodge whenever it's up. The longer the damage phase is, the more damage you will do because of the lingering effects of storm grenades. Looking at the Titan Jump, you need high lift with at least 90 mobility and Lion Rampants equipped. While amplified, you can see that this jump is a piece of cake, but it's also possible to do it without the speed boost being amplified, as you can see here. That about wraps it up. If you like this video and would like to see more Loman guides, hit that subscribe button. If it helps, feel free to check out my full clear for this encounter too. Thanks for watching. Good luck out there, Guardians.